Today we're up in the mountains of Malibu at the intersection of two great driving roads. And we've got two great driving cars here. The 2010 Audi S4 and my buddy Craig brought along his 2007 Audi RS4. My first experience in a B6S4, I fell in love with the Audi brand so much I actually went out and bought the RS4. So I say we go drive both these cars and figure out the five things we like about each car and the five things we don't like about each car. Sounds like a plan. You know, the worst car buying decision I ever made in my life was selling my B6S4 for an H1 Hummer. And we don't even have to get started with that, but the point is, everyone is going to miss the V8. But we got to find out, is this the right direction for Audi in their S4 and RS4 sedans going forward? So what do you say we hit the road? Perfect day for it. Let's hit it. I'm Matt Farah. That's Craig, and you're watching The Smoking Tire. So I'm sitting inside the 2010 Audi S4, and I gotta tell you, the first good thing about this car is the interior kicks ass. Very Porsche 997-ish. Soft, supple leather throughout. The steering wheel is leather wrapped. Everything lays at hand. It's really, really well done. Probably the best Audi has ever done in a passenger sedan. The smaller engine has managed to achieve 26 if you count the window sticker. And on a recent road trip, Tom and I were able to get 22 driving considerably faster than the cafe testers. The third great thing about the S4 is Audi's new active sport differential, which is a torque vectoring system, sends power exactly where you need it. So you can get back on the gas really early through a corner and have the system sort out the rest. It really makes the car stick like glue, especially in the dynamic mode, which we're using right now. It can send up to 100% of the power to any wheel. Number four on the list is subtle styling. Unless you're an Audi file, looking at this car, you wouldn't know what it is. It's subtle enough to fly under the radar with the cops, but flashy enough so that anybody who knows anything about cars knows that this isn't a typical run-of-the-mill vanilla A4. The fifth great thing about the S4, and perhaps the most important thing, is that it's cheaper than the last one, it's faster than the last one, it's lighter than the last one, and I have to say, it's better than the last S4. And that's what it's all about. But it's not all good news. Here are the five things we don't like about the new S4. First off, although the 6 is great, it doesn't sound like a V8, and it never could. The second thing we hate about the Audi S4 is what I call the nagging navigation wife. I had an ex-wife that wouldn't shut up when I drove, neither will the navigation system on this thing. You want to tell me to turn left once, maybe a second general reminder after that, STFU. The third bad thing about it is that, like all Audis before it, it burns more oil than it really should. After about a 1,500 mile road trip in this car, we had to add a quart of oil because the car wouldn't shut up about it. And the fourth thing on the list of dislikes is that the exhaust note, it's a little tepid. Perhaps I'm used to the snarling V8 on the RS4, but at street level, and don't let our microphones fool you, it's a little weak, kind of a jet engine kind of sound, not really that visceral sound that we love so much. Our final thing that we don't like about the S4 is that the body of this car simply looks better in wagon form. The lines are better and the butt is less droopy. But sadly, we can't buy a wagon S4 in the US, which sucks because that would make the best sleeper car ever. Now I'm going to throw it over to Craig, and he's going to start off the five things that we love about the RS4. Now we're in my car, the 2007 Audi RS4. The first thing that Matt and I can agree upon is that this is the top of the line flagship from Audi. Doesn't get any better than this. And that in itself is the number one reason we love this car. Number two. Because of the RS4's classic styling, it actually has a very low douchebag factor, unlike that other German sports sedan. The third reason we love this car is its dynamic ride control and all-wheel drive handling. It goes where you're pointed, it does what you tell it to do. Number four, it has a deceptively big interior. Lots of headroom and legroom in the front and back, and a really big trunk. It can hold so much stuff, it's like you were that close to being a wagon. The fifth and final thing Matt and I both love about this car is that the car has 60,000 miles on it and its fit and finish is still superb and rattle free, even after all the abuse we've thrown at this car. 
And although it's my baby and I've had it for 60,000 miles in that amount of time, I've identified a few quirks that I really dislike about the car. First thing I dislike about this car is a navigation system. The RNSE is a pain in the ass to work. It's not very intuitive. Even the early Lexuses were better than this thing. The number two thing we don't like about the RS4 is that at 3,900 pounds, it's still pretty heavy. And with the V8 up there, a lot of that weight is in the nose, which you really notice at low speed corners. Third thing we dislike about this car is the stereo system. It's a Bose, and the joke is, no highs, no lows, absolutely must be Bose, but either way, it freaking blows. The fourth thing about the RS4 kind of gets me is the fact that it's about $25,000 more than an S4. And is it $25,000 better than the S4? Definitely not. The last thing I dislike about this car is one little interior ergonomic feature, and that's the armrest. You always, every time you get in the car to get the armrest all the way down, the e-brake has to be fully off. Seriously? You couldn't fix that before it left the factory? No matter what car you drive, even the finest cars, you're going to find things that you like. You're going to find a few things you dislike. Now we're going to cut to the roadside and give you our final thoughts on these two great vehicles. We've had a great day on this road driving these two great cars, and I gotta say, I like them both. It's really hard to choose. Well, Matt, you can get the about 90% of the performance of the RS4 in that car for about 60% of the price. You can't go wrong either way. You really can. It shows you just how far Audi's come in a couple years. The car is lighter on its feet, it gets better fuel economy, and when you run them out, the performance is really, really there. But you could pick up a used RS4 for what you'd spend for a new S4. Yeah, but Matt, you get the warranty with that car. I know, we all know that when you're buying a German sports sedan, especially a high performance one like the RS4, the warranty really does go a long way because out of warranty repairs can be very expensive. Either way, you can't go wrong. Two great cars. Craig, have we had fun today or what? We did, but I'm keeping mind, I've been with her three years and I'm still in love with her. Yeah, and this one doesn't belong to me. I gotta have something to give back to the press agency. I'm Matt, that's Craig. We've had fun today up on these canyons and I'll see you guys next week. like Walmart had a sale on gears. It's a fobgina. I don't know what else to call it. The Evo bends the earth to its will. This car is impossible to drive slowly.